how does an aquarium filter work? Well, first of all, aquarium filtration is very important for your fish tank. It keeps the water clear and the entire tank looking good. But it does so much more than that. They actually help break down the waste that the fish produce, which will help maintain good water quality in between regular water changes. Now, how does an aquarium filter actually work? It can be broken down into three main functions, which are mechanical filtration, biological filtration, and chemical filtration. Starting with the mechanical filtration, this is probably the most obvious type of filtration. It collects the small debris that's floating in the water, like a piece of dead leaf, uneaten fish food, or fish waste. It filters out and collects these wastes with a sponge or mesh material, so it helps keep the water looking clean. But even if the debris is collected, it's still in the filtration system that's connected to the same tank water, so it actually doesn't improve the water quality. That's the job of the biological filtration. Most fish keepers would consider this, the biological filtration, the main type of filtration, simply because it's so much more important for the fish. Of course, less debris floating in the water will keep the aquarium looking good. But what's keeping the fish alive is the biological filtration. What biological filtration does is it helps process fish waste. When fish creates waste, it turns into ammonia and nitrite. This is dangerous for the fish and it can make them very sick and even kill them if the concentration is high enough. So biological filtration helps convert the ammonia and nitrite into nitrate, which are less harmful. This is known as the nitrogen cycle. Now what's interesting is, these filters aren't actually converting these compounds, but it's simply creating an environment for the beneficial bacteria to thrive in, so they can do the job. The bacteria converts the ammonia into nitrite, the nitrite into nitrate. Basically, these beneficial bacteria need a lot of surface area and oxygen to grow on. Materials such as ceramic rings and bioballs are commonly used for this. Now, you may be wondering why this is needed in an aquarium when in nature, fish don't rely on any filtration system. Well, the truth is, beneficial bacteria are everywhere even in natural ponds, rivers, and lakes. If you've ever stepped on a river stone, you probably realized how slippery they are. That's the bacteria living on the rock. In an aquarium, since it's a much smaller and enclosed environment, filters are used to assist with this natural process. And while we're talking about natural processes, have you noticed that there's nobody doing water changes in a natural pond but there's fish that are thriving in it. Well, that's because there's a bunch of beneficial bacteria doing their job. And at the end of the nitrogen cycle, when all the ammonia and nitrites are converted to nitrates, the plants are removing them out of the water. So if you don't like doing water changes in your aquarium all the time, add aquatic plants to your aquarium. Of course, if you never do water changes, certain trace minerals can build up and cause harm to your fish. But once again, if you add a bunch of plants, especially the fast growing ones, you won't have to do water changes so often. Lastly, there's chemical filtration. This is actually the less common type of filtration compared to mechanical and especially biological filtration. Not all aquariums use chemical filtration, but it can be useful, depending on what you're looking for. There's many different media used for chemical filtration, and each has their purpose. But activated carbon is one of the most popular type of media used in chemical filtration. 
when you add activated carbon in your filtration system, it extracts dissolved waste and compounds in the water. It can help remove chlorine and chloramine, dissolve proteins, tannins from bogwood, and bad odor, so it can be useful. Since mechanical filtration is not effective against waste that's dissolved in the water, this is where chemical filtration comes to play. Earlier, we mentioned about natural processes and how fish can thrive in nature without a filtration system. Let's revisit that. Now, you may be wondering, since fish in nature don't rely on filters, can I set up my tank without a filter? Well, depending on the type of fish you keep and your setup, it may be possible. For example, fish like betta fish can breathe oxygen directly from the air, not just their gills. This is because they come from a place that's low in oxygen. This is their natural environment. But let's not forget about the water quality. Just because they can survive in low oxygen environments, it doesn't mean they will thrive in bad water conditions full of waste and full of ammonia. Without a filter, you would probably be required to do a lot more water changes regardless of what type of fish you keep. Let's say with a filter, you can get by with doing only one water change per week. Now, if you try to set up your tank without a filter, you're probably going to be stuck doing water changes much more often. And without a filter, you would only be able to keep smaller fish or simply less fish in general in the same aquarium. Once again, going back to the question, can I get by without a filter? The answer is, for most aquarium fish and most aquarium setups, you're going to want an aquarium filter to go with it, simply because there's a lot of purposes that the aquarium filter serves. And especially if this is your first aquarium, you're going to appreciate what the aquarium filter can do for you.